Nearly all the robots that have been developed so far are tools that are adjuncts to existing human faculties. There's been a co-evolution between humans and their tools dating back to when our first ancestor, Homo habilis, picked up a rock two and a half million years ago. And so robotic research is fascinating as a laboratory for exploring what remarkable creatures we human beings are. Certainly as a kid, I was always fascinated by robots. Robots and technology in general are an inevitable part of our culture. The public's perceptions of robots are shaped by entertainment and it's filtered through motion pictures. Robots are portrayed as bad guys oftentimes because the unknown equals fear equals drama. The classical fear with regard to robots in science fiction movies is that they're going to become smarter than us and therefore they will um, dominate us, control us, we'll become their slaves. The villain side comes from the fact that they may replace us. It's like they're impersonating us, right? It's a crime to impersonate us. I think a lot of people watch too much television. <laughs> There's a lot of things you can dream up in a sci-fi movie, but when it gets down to reality, it's a much more difficult task to make that kind of technology come to life. I think robots have such a bad rap. I love science fiction, but if I get one more shot of the Terminator, I think I'm gonna scream. Rescue robots are saving lives. You're talking about much smaller robots that can come and rescue you after a disaster. Highly mobile, highly agile, very self-contained, and semi-autonomous. We use a lot of robotics in our daily life. A lot of people don't know that. You know, the all things robot means that is uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's movie. That's not what it is. Heart surgery is a very precise surgery, you know, and robotic assisted surgery is a phenomenal, phenomenal advance. You sit in a console where your movement is translated through the computer to these tiny instruments, and is very, very precise. This is the least invasive type of surgery. So now the patient can go home in about two or three days. Some people obviously have some preconceptions uh, about robots, maybe from what they've seen in movies or whatnot. But I think over time, as people become more familiar with technology in all areas of their life, they're going to come to better understand what benefits this type of technology could provide people. I think the world's a better place with robots, and we need more of them. A lot of people think of Honda as just an automobile or a motorcycle company, and they really are surprised to learn that there's this research program in robotics and that Honda has developed a robot, Osimo. The goal is to eventually have a bipedal humanoid robot that can be helpful in a person's home. People sometimes ask, well, why would Honda go into bipedal mobility? And uh, I think the answer is in the word mobility itself. Honda's always been a mobility company. The whole development started in 1986, and at that time, the general thinking, even among specialists, was that it would be impossible to develop a bipedal robot. Attempting to replicate human motion is a remarkably challenging task. It's much more complex than we would ever imagine when we look at the idea of just stepping one foot in front of the other. In many ways, the robot walks like a toddler, back and forth, very carefully, slowly, and as the robot matures, hopefully we'll see this smoothing out of the movement. The mobility of Osimo has come so far, and all the research that went into Osimo is really bringing about some phenomenal technology, I think, that can be applied in other parts of Honda's business. One of the reasons why we have a, the most fantastic anti-lock brake system in the world comes from the endeavor of, of, of building a robot that can walk upstairs. This 20-some years of studying how to walk has provided Honda with a great insight into how to help people who are perhaps having difficulty walking with the walking assist device.
人の歩行をさまざまな角度で研究してます。でその中で得られたのがあのそれはですね人と機械っていうのは人と人と同じように信頼関係が必要なんですね。In educating people about robots, one thing that we notice, and this has been pulled together by many studies by many people, sort of the animist fallacy. If it moves, you think it's alive, and many people think robots were just simply creepy. そこが克服できないと人と共存できないんだと思うんですね。で、例えばまあ人型のロボットで。それこそ人間と同じような顔の形、多分それは気持ち悪いというかちょっと恐怖だと思うんですね。The Japanese scientist Mori proposed something called the uncanny valley, and his basic proposition was that humans would feel more and more comfortable with a robot that has two legs and two arms versus one that has twenty arms. But when they got too close to being like humans, there was a significant drop off. In the comfort level with those robots. 私の場合、ロボットの研究というのを23年続けてきたんですけどもその時に非常にその工夫したのは例えば顔が特徴なんですね。目が見えるようで見えない。口があるようでない。だから最後にえー、家の中で役立つロボットにするためにはそういったサイズの中にいろんな、えー、培った伝送技術であるとかそういうものを全て、えー、入れ込んで小さいサイズで親しみのあるデザインでそのロボットが、えー、一歩を踏み出して歩かした瞬間これが一番あの印象に残ってます。Honda's come a long way with Osimo, but there's still a long way to go. And now we're working on the artificial intelligence part of it, which is the next big hurdle. When Osimo becomes an autonomous entity walking around, engaging in all kinds of social interactions, what kind of faculties, what kind of sensors, what kind of Uh, systems of awareness would the robot have, and how will the robot evaluate new situations it encounters? What should the robot do? I think Asimo is a challenge to be 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 a The realm of possibility is, is always expanding. It's kind of like a mirror that we hold up to ourselves. Whatever robots turn out to be will largely be a function of us and the decisions we make. Part of the fascination with robots is just that. It's just another way of reflecting in a process of self-understanding, of trying to discern who we are.